Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is campaign. Let's take a look at some of the definitions for this verb. The first and most likely way you're going to hear this verb used is to mean to work in an organized and active way towards a particular goal. I'm going to point out this particular goal usually has some sort of political connection to it. So you might be hearing this word campaign a great deal uh, as we're leading up to the United States general uh, election, the presidential election. A second way to use the verb campaign is to mean to race something. Uh, this is something, it could be a car, it could be a horse, it could be something else. Um, but you're racing this thing in a number or a series of competitions. I, I will tell you, I don't hear this usage very often or I, I don't see it when I'm reading, but always kind of interesting to know the different ways we can use verbs. You should know that campaign is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all we need to do is add a ing to form campaigning. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by adding ed. Since the verb campaign ends in a n or a voiced n sound, the ed is going to make a d sound. Campaigned. Campaigned. Let's take a look at some phrasal verbs now that utilize this word. You're going to notice that I really just have one, uh, and that's campaign for. It can have a couple different meanings, uh, but both of these meanings are going to connect back to that first or most uh, popular usage for this verb. So let's take a look. The first meaning of campaign for is to lead or take part in a campaign to support someone or something. Okay. So uh, this can be done on a volunteer basis. Uh, some people professionally work on others' uh, campaigns for office or to accomplish uh, the creation of an, a new law or a new rule or, or something of, of that effect. So here's an example of the first usage of campaign for in a sentence. My neighbors are campaigning for an exp expanded city recycling program. So again, the idea here is that uh, the neighbors in this sentence are for expanding recycling in the city. And they're trying to encourage others to support uh, a, a bigger recycling program. A second way to use campaign for uh, is sort of more individual. It means to try to be elected to a certain office or position. Here's an example of that usage. Several people are campaigning for president. So several people are trying to be elected to be uh, the president of the United States. That's all that means. Let's continue using our verb campaign. And I thought it might be interesting to talk uh, about our verb as it connects to uh, ability. So generally, we use modals to talk about uh, what we're able to do, but that's not the only way. So uh, we'll look at sentences that express past ability present ability and future ability. And for both of these, I'm going to give you two example sentences in the affirmative, negative, and with yes or no questions, uh, because there, there are two ways that we can express this. So we can use a modal and then just the base verb, or we can use be, able, to, and a base verb to talk about ability. Let's look at past tense first. So the modal I will use to talk about past ability is could. 
So uh, again, if I want to make an affirmative sentence to talk about something I uh, could do in the past, right? That's only all I need. I need could and my base verb. A second way for me to make a sentence is to use the past tense form of be. So that's going to be was or were, depending on my subject. And um, so we'll do be able to and then our base verb. So here are two example sentences that have the exact same meaning. Candidates could campaign freely in 2016. So there we have a date in the past. Um, the process of, of candidates campaigning this year is really different because of the pandemic uh, and, and the fact that it's generally not safe for us to have large gatherings and for us to be out shaking hands with many different people um, and to, to have that sort of close contact. A second way to say that same idea is candidates were able to campaign freely in 2016. If I want to express uh, that someone did not have a particular ability in the past, all I need to do is insert my not after the modal. You might hear native speakers use the contraction couldn't. Um, so here's an example of that. They couldn't campaign in person in May. The second sentence I have here are, is going to have the same meaning. I'm inserting not after my be verb. You might hear native speakers use the contractions wasn't or won't. Here's that sentence. They weren't able to campaign in person in May. Okay. If I want to ask a yes or no question about someone's past ability, I can word it so that I start with my modal could, then I have my subject, and then the base verb. Could he campaign for diverse hiring practices? The same idea can be uh, accomplished with a past tense form of be, then my subject, then able to, and my base verb. Was he able to campaign for diverse hiring practices? Next, let's look at present ability. To make a sentence that uh, talks about one's ability at the present moment, we can use the modal can and our base verb, or We'll use a present form of be, that's am, is, or are, and then able to in the base verb. So this will look really similar, uh, just small changes uh, to note the present tense. So here are two affirmative examples. All candidates can, can campaign equally and fairly. All candidates are able to campaign equally and fairly. If I want to make a negative sentence that discusses one's uh, lack of ability in the present, I'm just going to insert not after the modal can or not after my be verb. Here are two examples of that. She can't campaign alone. She isn't able to campaign alone. If I want to make a yes or no question that asks about someone's present ability, I can start with my modal can, then have my subject, and then the, the base verb. Or I can use the present form of be, my subject, able to, and the base verb. Can he campaign from home? Is he able to campaign from home? Finally, let's look at future ability. Again, I can use the modal can and a base verb to express future ability. So many times students would ask me, well, how do I know if it's future or present? And the way many times you can tell is there, there's going to be a time signal that indicates its future. You can see this in my first example sentence. They can campaign for women in sports in 2021. Right? So that's the future. A second way to talk about future ability is again to go back to our be able to. This time we'll use will be able to and our base verb. They will be able to campaign for
for women in sports. If I want to make uh, a sentence negative uh, in discussing futurability, again, I can insert not uh, after my modal. You might hear the contraction can't. Uh, you could also insert not after will. So we have will not be able to in our base verb. Here are two examples of that. I can't campaign at that event next weekend. I won't be able to campaign at that event next weekend. Finally, if I want to ask a question about someone's future ability, I could start with my modal can, then have my subject, and then the base verb. Again, there's probably going to be a time signal that, that indicates its future to help my, my listener uh, understand I'm, I'm in talking about the future, not the present. So here's an example. Can you campaign in person before November the, before the no, November 3rd election? Pardon me. I could ask that same question using will. Then my subject, then be able to, and my base verb. Will you be able to campaign in person? Now, let's take a look at some words that are related to our verb campaign. The first word should look really familiar to you. It's got the exact same spelling and it's going to have the exact same pronunciation. It's just the noun form campaign. Like our uh, verb, it can also have a couple different meanings. So a campaign could be an organized course of action to achieve some particular goal. And I probably didn't note this as I was talking about the verb initially. It's most common to hear this word used in connection to politics uh, and the process of electing people to office. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be um, used exclusively. Uh, sometimes nonprofits will use this word campaign to talk about fundraising, right? So an organized effort to raise money uh, in order to start a new program or uh, buy a piece of equipment. Right? Um, you can have the different campaigns uh, at work. Um, and again, this idea that there's a collected group of actions to achieve some particular goal. So that usage is going to be in my example sentence here. He has organized a campaign for casual Fridays at his office. So again, this person is trying to get everybody on board, right? We should be able to wear jeans and, and not be so uh, stuffy and professional on Fridays. It's a, in, in some ways a very simple goal, uh, but, it, but could be really important to this group of employees. A second way to use the noun campaign is to mean a series of military operations in a particular area or that involve one type of fighting. So I remember seeing this word used a lot as I studied World War II in school. Uh, and so that's, that's actually, I used an example of that uh, for, for my example sentence. The Normandy campaign was a turning point in World War II. The noun campaign can also sometimes just be a shortened form um, of a political campaign or an electoral campaign. Uh, as I see uh, the word campaign used in news stories, um, as I hear it mentioned uh, in television programs as well, um, the second bullet point here I have here is probably the more common way that you're going to be hearing this noun used uh, in the next six weeks or so. So uh, a political campaign or an electoral campaign is an organized effort which seeks to influence which person is selected for an office or perhaps whether a particular rule or law goes into effect. Okay. So as you hear the noun form campaign used, um, it might be talking about a group of people, 
uh, who are working for a candidate in hopes that that candidate um, is elected uh, for a particular office. So uh, that's my example uh, below. Has the candidate's campaign responded to the news? Um, this will happen over the course of the next six weeks where uh, uh, a big event or um, some information is released, right? And uh, newspaper reporters, television reporters, other uh, forms of media will reach out to the campaign team for a comment. The last word I'm going to leave you with is another noun. It's campaigner. It's a person who actively promotes the goals of a particular cause. So here's an example of that. They are vocal anti-gambling campaigners. So uh, my example sentence here, uh, we have a group of people who are trying to probably stop uh, gambling. Uh, could be in casinos, could be in, in other forms. That's all that means. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you'll pay attention uh, to this word as you read and uh, watch TV in the coming weeks. Have a great day.